Whether you're in North or South Carolina or anywhere else in the world, enter the Cat Cave to listen to your favorite Carolina Panthers podcast as part of the Keep Pounding Podcast Network, powered by the Fans First Sports Network, where you can find shows like Embrace Debate and Inside the Vaults. And uh, and boy, howdy, we've got some uh, we've got some fun stuff to talk about on this week's show. Welcome inside the Cat Cave. And before we get into all the uh, all the fun conversation, let's go ahead and welcome in uh, first and foremost. And I'm going to introduce him first uh, because of the conversation that we had on the last show. Uh, Shannon Smith at podcast underscore Smitty. What's going on, bud? You ready for this show? Oh, I'm definitely ready. This uh, mock draft, I think, is going to be very interesting what I have for everybody tonight. So let's go. Yeah, I don't think I don't think Michael Davis is ready for this show. A host of Drop the Mic and Out of Pocket with Michael Davis. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we were on the show and we got into a pretty uh, a pretty heated debate. It almost would would it have made sense that I wasn't on the show last week because of the conversation we had. Although last week was my uh, was my birthday, so that's why I didn't I, I didn't come on the show. I was actually out at dinner. Michael, what's up, bud? How you feeling tonight? How you I feeling feel- today? I feel excellent, Ryan. It's it's great to have you back. Um, I miss you so much last week. I know week. you did. Um, so much that I had you on Drop the Mic this week as well. I just need a double dose of Ryan because I completely missed you last week. You're getting a triple dose because you're going to be on the on the WrestleMania preview show of Tap Outs and Touchdowns as well. That's, so you are getting all you we'll see how this me goes. this week. We'll see, yeah, how, we'll this see how this goes. Uh, I might have because... a birthday tomorrow. Because last week's show, some news had not broken at the time that y'all recorded. Um, Some news that I was anticipating the week prior that I was saying that I would wear this specific player's jersey every week on this show if he signed. And as a man of my word, I am wearing my retired Carolina Gamecocks Jadavion Clowney jersey. Because last week, Jadavion Clowney signed a two million, a a two year, sorry, $20 $20 million deal with the Carolina Panthers that could be worth up to $24 million with incentives. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to do it again because of all the crap that I got about, oh, he's not even the best player on the defense that they signed. Shannon, how do you feel about this signing? Jadavian Clowney, let's 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 kind of remind everybody that he was the number one overall pick with the Houston Texans back in 2014. He tied a career-high nine and a half sacks last year in Baltimore on, on one of the best defenses in the league. Uh, tied that career high that he had back in 2017 with his t- with the Texans. Um, you know he's he's got some pretty decent career statistics: 363 career tackles, 52 and a half sacks, nine fumble recovers. He also has a pick six uh, from a few years ago. Uh, Shannon, how do you feel about the, the Carolina Panthers bolstering some of what they lost with Frankie Luvu and Brian Burns in the signing of 31 year old Jadavian Clowney? I like the pickup. I like the sign. I think it's very important because Jadavian Clowney, I believe, brings a new dynamic to this offense. He can be a stand-up defensive end, be that edge rusher. Carolina's got to get to the quarterback, and that's the main thing that they have to do. You know, once again, I say this for the third week in a row, dead last in sacks as a defense. They were a good defense. It's just they could have been a better defense if they could get to the quarterback. I think Jadavian Clowney makes a great um, addition to this defense when it comes down to getting to the quarterback, which is what Carolina really needs to do. I like the sign. It was a great move. Dan Morgan, good move, man. Uh, listen, in Michael's defense, Michael did did mention the fact that Jadavian Clowney has never had double-digit sacks in his, in his career, nine and a half being his career high that he's done twice. Uh, Michael, I want to know, how much Jadavian Clowney football have you watched in the NFL? I, I, I want to ask that because not just out of college, uh, being the 2012 SEC Defensive Player of the Year, but in the NFL, he is a three-time Pro Bowler. From 2016 to 2018, he made the Pro Bowl every single year. He was second-team All-Pro. That's the, that's the statistic that a lot of people like to talk about. Pro Bowls are popularity contact, contests. All-Pros are what you're looking for. And he was an All-Pro back in 2018, a mere six years ago. Um, how much, how much football have you watched today being planning? I'm listen, listen, to be clear, like this isn't me trying to attack you like, Oh, you don't know what you're talking about. Cause you don't see him. I will genuinely want to know as a fan of team, uh, as a fan of teams that Jadavian Clowney's never played for, 
How much Clowney in the NFL have you actually seen get to play? And what are your thoughts on what you have gotten to see as your Damian Clowney? So remember when he came out as the number one overall pick with the Houston Texans, pairing him up with J.J. Watt, that was exciting to watch. Like, I was excited to watch that. But it felt like every time I went to watch a Texans game, uh, it, it was like J.J. Watt was hurt or Jadavian Clowney was hurt. So, like, Clowney spent, what, five years in Houston, if I want to say correct. A few more than that. I'm going to look it up while you're talking. Yeah, I, I think I think Clowney spent five years, maybe six, in Houston. But it was like we never got to see the full potential of Watt and Clowney because one of them was hurt. And then after Clowney's tenure in Houston, he became a journeyman. Like, he's been on Tennessee. He's been on uh, Cleveland. He's been on Baltimore. Uh He's been on Seattle, I believe. Like he yep. just he's just become a journeyman. And that's not what you want from a number one overall pick. Um, but at the same time, if he wasn't that journeyman, he probably doesn't end up in Carolina. So if he can have a healthy season for the Panthers, two healthy seasons since he signed for two years, and if he can post double digit sacks, like that's awesome. And I, and I understand completely, like it's not always about stopping the uh quarterback and sack him in the backfield it's about stopping the run as well um which Clow clowney's good at like clowney can help in that defense but like the best ability is availability and i don't know if i'm just being objective here i don't know if clowney replaces burns but clowney is a cheaper option than brian burns as the panthers uh go about this rebuild that it, it'll take a few years for the panthers to rebuild this team uh, to be clear, Jadavian Clowney was drafted by number one overall by the Texans in 2014. He spent five years with the Texans. He was traded to the Seahawks. If you remember why he left, he left Houston. He was in a career season. He was in a career year, or I'm sorry, a contract year. And uh, Clowney was was willing to 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 have the conversations and sign with Houston. And instead, he got wind that Houston was yeah had him on the trade block to see what they could get for him. And so he said, oh, well, you're going to trade me. Go ahead and trade. And that's when he spent the season. He was traded to Seattle, spent a season there, spent a season with the Titans uh, back in 2020. Um, and then he spent two years with the Browns before he spent a season with the Ravens. Now, you mentioned uh, he was banged up a lot in his career. Uh, I mentioned it on this show a couple weeks ago that Jadavian Clowney uh, under underwent – Microfracture surgery after his rookie season that ended the NBA career of Greg Oden, essentially. This that this never started, this, but okay. Okay, I mean you can you can argue that, but microfracture surgery potentially could have ended the career of Jadavian Clowney. And so, having said that, he was able to come back uh, after the microfracture surgery. A couple years later is where he came came back with the nine and a half career sacks. Um, with, with the Texans before he would move on uh, to all of his other teams. The knock that, that he doesn't play a full season in the NFL, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, he played every every game last season. Uh, if, you, if you go back, uh, 2014, he only played four games because of injury. Uh, he played, and again, there, was, there were 16 games in the NFL uh, until just a few years ago. Uh, from 2015 to 2018, his tenure with the Texans, he played in 13 games, 14 games, 16 games, and 15 games. So, so two full played, years. Two I mean, full I mean, years. He played 14. He played 14, 15, and 16 games. The, the 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 lowest amount of games he played in a season was with the Titans, and his rookie year with the Texans when he when he got hurt. Like the the durability, everybody. I mean. Christian McCaffrey misses a game every season. Debo yep. Samuel misses a game every season. Uh, uh, how many how many games is his? Why can't I think? Alvin Kamara for the New Orleans Saints missed every year. Michael Thomas was about to be a Hall of Fame wide receiver, and that dude has played like four games in the last six years. There's plenty of guys that that were thought to be stars that truly miss games, like like uh, Michael Thomas, and guys that miss a couple games because they get banged up. Jadavian Clowney is a six foot seven. Defensive end that they've been lining up at outside linebacker in, in in Baltimore and in Cleveland. And the reason he left Cleveland was because on like right before a game day, they decided they were going to move him around. 
he's like, I'm not comfortable with this position. Like, why are you moving me? Uh, and they said, well, if you don't want to do, if you don't want to play that game, then we'll let you go. Like, you don't, you can go home. And that's what he did. And then he had a prove it year last year. And that's exactly what he did. Despite having played, uh, well, no matter of fact, despite nothing, he played all 17 games. He had 40 tackles, 21 were solo, nine and a half sacks, five pass deflections. So, so I, I asked you how much clowny football you've seen, because I wanted to bring this point up because I, I, I know we've got, we've got, Another player to get to that he might be bringing in. And then Shannon's, Shannon did a, a mock draft for us that we're going to talk about to close the show. Uh, but Jadavian Clowney, it's not all about sack numbers with this guy. Jadavian Clowney is a an elite run defender from the outside linebacker slash defensive end slash defensive lineman standpoint. Again, his career, he's got over three, almost 400 tackles in his career as a defensive end. Uh, when we, you talk about passes deflected from that position, the dude's got a wingspan that that is is, I mean, as big as anybody in the NBA. Like all he's got to do is get his hands up, and and a quarterback, especially a smaller quarterback, isn't going to be able to throw over him. Um, the the way that Jadavian Clowney disrupts plays is not by getting sacks; it's by getting into the backfield and and causing havoc, and that's what he brings to this defense. Brian Burns had sort of a down year last year. Frankie Lubu was the one that led the team with tackles from a linebacker position. I think Jadavian Clowney is going to give us similar production between those two guys. I think that the Jadavian Clowney is going to give us the pass rush we need to make guys like Baker Mayfield and whoever, or Kirk Cousins and Derek Carr. He is going to wreak havoc on those three quarterbacks in the NFC South. I don't think – I'm not going to argue that maybe he's going to be a pro bowler or an all pro this coming season. But considering they're getting him for $10 million a year and more than likely his final stop in the NFL, um, is is I think it's a pretty big deal considering, he's, again, coming off of a, a career year with one of the best defenses in the league in the Baltimore Ravens. And th it, there's more implications to this. Because not only is Damian Clowney signing in Carolina – He's also trying to recruit another former teammate, not just a high, not just a college teammate, but a high school teammate in Stephon Gilmore. Gilmore played one season with Carolina before he signed with, I believe, was the Colts before he went to the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, but he played at South Point High School with Jadavian Clowney in Rock Hill, South Carolina. Uh, I mean, if you're watching the show uh, live, or if you're watching the, the video feed on the Tobacco Road Sports Radio's YouTube channel. You'll see some of the accolades that Stephon Gilmore has. He was a former uh, NFL Defensive Player of the Year. He won the Super Bowl with, uh, was it the, the New England Patriots, Patriots that he won a Super Bowl with? Um, he, he's got as a five-time Pro Bowl selection. I mean, the dude the dude was, a, a, a I wouldn't call him a generational talent, but he was one of the best, if not the best, defensive backs in the NFL for quite some time. And now, Jadavian Clowney, is trying to steal him away from teams like the Dallas Cowboys, who's been competing uh, for playoff spots and Super Bowls, and the, and the Detroit Lions, who are, are a heavy favorite to try to land Stephon Gilmore after losing both C.J. Gardner-Johnson and Cam Sutton in this offseason for two vastly different reasons. Uh, but there was there was some momentum that was picked up for, for Stephon Gilmore to wind up in Detroit. Shannon, I'm going to defer back to you here again. Do you think that Jada Jadavian Clowney has what it takes to get a former Pro Bowl defensive back like Stefan Gilmore back here in Carolina, back home? I want to think so because they have need for a defensive back like Stefan Gilmore. Carolina, not only were they dead last in sacks, but they were dead last in interceptions as well, too, taking the ball away. Stefan Gilmore brings that dynamic and plus would be that number one, of course, to uh, – Mike's favorite player, J.C. Horn, um, that would be good for Carolina to uh, nab um, Stephon Gilmore on that defense. And I think Jadavian Clowney would be the right person to try to get him there because, of course, why not rekindle the old days? Why not go back to where we, where we began? The essence, let's go home. Let's play in front of those sort of Friday night lights. I think that that is a great idea. I think it's a wonderful idea to uh, get uh, Stephon Gilmore. But will he go? The verdict is is out there. Like uh, we'll we'll see. I hope it happens because 
this will be incredible for Carolina if they can nab a good free agent signing like Stephon Gilmore and have him play again. I think it would help with the development of J.C. Horn. Yes. Um, I think I think it would help with, with some veteran leadership on that defense. I mean, when you lose a guy like Brian Burns and Frankie Lubu, you lose a lot of veteran leadership. And so you get a guy that, that's got 31 career interceptions, uh, two defensive touchdowns in his career. He knows how to get after the ball in the backfield. Now, granted, he has been burned a lot in his career. But last year for the Cowboys, he had 64 tackles, 13 passes defending defenses, and two interceptions for the fifth-ranked pass defense in all the NFL. Michael, you're pretty familiar with Stephon Gilmore and the Dallas Cowboys. What are your What's your take on bringing Gilmore in as another added piece to this, to this secondary here in Carolina? Dude, whoever gets Gilmore at this point in his career – is getting a starting corner who can steal lock down half the field. And it's incredible because I watched all Gilmore's games last year, and it was just phenomenal because when the Cowboys lost Trayvon Diggs, Cowboys fans were like, oh, this season's over. Like, you know, what's going to happen? And, of course, Deron Bland started getting his interceptions, but the unsung hero of that defense was Stephon Gilmore. Like, when Deron Bland would get burned because he would jump for the interceptions, Stephon Gilmore was locking down that half of the field. So I, I am surprised that Gilmore is still a free agent as we record this. And, of course, I'm sure as soon as we're done with the podcast, as soon as it airs, Gilmore's going to sign with somebody, which makes this, what we're saying, irrelevant at that point just because of the timing. Because that's how it always happens. <laughs> Happened last week with Jadavian Clowney. I mean, that's just our luck, and it's whatever. Like, we can't control that. But Stephon Gilmore can still play at an elite level. And I and not to harp on Jadavian Clowney, but I think, like, getting Gilmore at this stage of his career means more than getting Jadavion Clowney at this stage of his career. Just because Gilmore still proved that he can play a full season and play at an elite level. He's a former defensive player of the year. And he's yeah, still I playing just... at a high level. I mean, like, this is... Th th this why, would be why are you doing this, Michael? Signing. Why are you doing this? Gilmore, Gilmore would be a good signing. I don't know why you're like no, because <laughs> like you just that. took. I just described the the fact that that Clowney stays on the field the majority of the season. He played a full season with the Ravens last year. He's coming, okay. and you're saying you're saying that Gilmore can prove that he that has proven that he can play in a full season. Like so, Clowney hasn't. So <laughs> here, here here's here's what I mean by that. Okay in terms of, like, Gilmore having more of an impact on this Panthers team than Clowney, okay? And here's why, and this isn't a knock on Clowney at all, whatsoever, uh, despite what, you know, has been said the last couple of weeks. Like, believe me on this, okay? Clowney played on an elite defense, and you, you can be okay with the Baltimore defense, but, like, when you talk about pass rushers, you need multiple – pass rushers, multiple guys who can get in the backfield. What teams can do now that Brian Burns isn't in the factor, they can focus all their attention on Clowney, okay? And that's going to open up less opportunities for Clowney. When the Cowboys lost Diggs last year, the Cowboys didn't miss a beat because Gilmore stepped up in that role and still locked down half the field. So, like, we've seen Gilmore when pieces have fallen around him that Gilmore can still do it. Clowney going from the Baltimore defense to the Carolina defense and where it's at right now in this rebuilding time, it, it's just – it remains to be seen. Like, it could be a good signing or it could be like an oh well. I would just uh, – personally, I would love to have uh, Jadavian Clowney, DJ Wanham, and Stefan Gilmore on this Panthers defense. You talk about getting – you talk about appealing to the state of South Carolina. They're like a T. Higgins away – from truly appearing appealing to the state of South Carolina, T. Higgins, obviously a former Clemson Tiger, but you would have three former Gamecocks on the team, one of the best Clemson Tigers in the NFL currently on the team. So I'll pose this question, then we're going to move on here. I'm going to give you three teams to choose from, and I'm going to tell you where you think Stephon Gilmore lands before, uh, before the season starts. The Detroit Lions, the Dallas Cowboys, or the Carolina Panthers? Shannon, Why where does Stephon Gilmore? Why because Detroit? He, because the buzz is that the the, the, the the Lions need a defensive back, mm -hmm. and they have been targeting Gilmore for weeks. Okay. 
I'm not. I'm not. I'm not just being a homer here. Okay. Like it's legit. Okay. That's like fair. That's fair. Yeah. Okay. Right. So Shannon. Shannon, of those three teams, where does Stephon Gilmore land in this offseason? This is really, really tough. But for the sake of our fans at home, I think he winds up with the Carolina Panthers. I think he does. I think that he is at a point in his career where he would like to go back home, where he would like to uh, make a solid impact. I think that he would make a big impact in Carolina because of the passing that's going all over the place in um, the NFC South to uh, potentially go up against uh, Mike Evans um, twice. I think that'll be a big showcase for uh, Stephon uh, Gilmore. I like it. I I think it would be really great to have him on the squad. Um, I, I want him to go to Carolina, and I think that he will. All right, Mike, same question. Dallas, Detroit, and Carolina, where does Stephon Gilmore land in the 2024 offseason? So this is a podcast on the Fans First Sports Network. I wrote an article uh, about a week or two ago about Jerry Jones just not opening up his wallet for players, even to retain his own. So I think the Cowboys are out of the question. Uh, he might end up on the Panthers. Who knows? There is a void there. There is the South Carolina ties. There's the ties with Jadavian Clowney. But I think at this point of his career, Gilmore probably wants another rink. And the best chance of those three teams who are actually willing to pay, I'm going to give it to your to the Detroit Lions. Uh, I, I think that could be a possibility. If we're limiting it to those three teams, I, I'll, I'll say Detroit, but, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up in Carolina. I think I think the fact that you've got a former college and high school teammate in Jadavian Clowney, um, he's, he's already played a year with the Panthers. Um, I, I think that was prior to the new ownership. Uh, but nevertheless, he was banged up the one year he was here. He's also got other former Gamecocks on that team and DJ Wanham and JC Horn to welcome him in, like the in the, the Panther Gamecocks, if you will. Uh, so, and then obviously, you know, you, you've got some other ties that have been here and there with with the with the Carolina Panthers. Maybe they bring Shy Smith in with with the Panthers lo- losing Lavishka Chenault uh, to the Seattle Seahawks earlier this week. Maybe they bring back Shy Smith and, and see if they can get him as a as a practice squad or a, a full roster guy. But uh, let, that's enough talking about about two guys. I'm so glad that I got to host this show and talk about food two former Gamecocks for the better part of 20 minutes. It's Happy just birthday. nothing. Now, yeah, what a great late birthday present to me. Thank you so much. All right. We've got the NFL draft taking place April 25th through the 27th in Detroit, Michigan. That is less than a month away. And that I means what everybody thinks it means. It's mock draft. It's, excuse me. Words are hard. It's mock draft season. There we go. I can get it out. And Shannon uh, was able to, to do his own little mock draft. I say own little mock draft like it's something cute. And, you know, Shannon was able to go and, and do a mock draft. It's it's mock drafts are funny. If you've never done one, you sort of get to play GM and see how players go uh, w- with the way that you expect them to go in the draft. So, Shannon, we're going to open the floor to you, man. Tell us about how the, the, the way that your mock draft went, how how it is that you went about doing a mock draft, and, and what we saw uh, as a result of your mock draft. Now, when I was doing this and I was um, looking at my picks and the guys that I wanted, one of the things that I wanted to address with this Carolina Panthers squad, especially on the offensive end, is speed. I need fast quick guys on the offense of course you want to feel holes and then on the defense you want to add some speed on the defense as well too but i think this mock draft it was actually really cool i've I've not really done a mock draft in a long time so this is actually pretty cool so md good idea but um we'll just go ahead and go into these picks i ain't going to take up everybody's time here let's go into these picks now pick number 33 i decided to go receiver I want speed. I want to get down the field, which is something that I think Carolina really needs. And for pick number 33, I got Xavier Worthy from Texas. Woo! I, I, like, I like this pick, though, for real, because, of course, when we talk about speed, Xavier Worthy did break the 40 time for the NFL Combine at 4.21 40 time. It was really, really good. It was great seeing it. I actually had to look at the video again when I drafted him. Six foot one, 175 pounds, 
speedy guy, caught some great passes this year. He went 197 total catches, 2,155 yards, and 26 total touchdowns. Last year, 75 catches, 114 yards, five touchdowns. I think that he would be a great uh, addition to this Carolina uh, Panthers offense. He could be that third receiver, maybe that fourth receiver. Depends on how time will tell. Now I'm out real quick before we move on. Go ahead. Mike, I want to know your thoughts. Uh, Could he be the next John Ross or the next Tyreek Hill? How would you like it if if he was able to, if if Panthers were able to snag uh, Worthy here in in our first pick in the second round? I've heard there's issues with his hands. That's the one concern with the wide receiver, but he is fast. I mean, yeah, how how can you play against the four two one? Um, so if if his catching's okay and if they feel comfortable with it, um, getting a receiver at thirty three is a uh, is a good spot. Good job, Shannon. Yep. And with the with the with the new NFL uh, kickoff return rules, yes. uh, there's no fair catch. So the the guy is a, a return specialist too. With with a top end speed like that, I love I love the fact that you were able to get worthy. All right, Shannon, let's go. Let's. What's your next pick that you were able to get? Okay, pick number 39, of course, we got to address issues inside of the interior line. So I decided to go with pick number 39, Jackson Powers Johnson, the 6'3", 320-pound center from Oregon. He was the 2023 Remington Trophy winner, a unanimous All-American, and a first-team All-Pac-12. We got to fill the hole at the center spot. We lost a center in this free agency which is something that we have to get right, especially with our interior line. So it would be very important to insert a center. I think that he would be a great addition to this line. Get him coached up. Big guy, strong guy. Let's get him in here. Let's get this running game going. Let's get Chuba some yards. Let's do this. Mike, Mike, like the pick? I actually love the pick. It was ironic I did Graham Barton at 33 and Troy Franklin at 39 last week on my mock draft. I like him getting a receiver and then getting an actual center yes. um, at 39. An award-winning center at that. Bingo. Yeah. Bingo. Man. We got to do it. We got to do it. Dan Morgan can get off. Shannon Smith's the new GM. Let's see what you got next up, Shannon. 65. Right. Okay. For pick number 65, wanted to go defense. Once again, we got to get speed. We got to get to the quarterback. We got to get to the backfield. Tackles for losses. So I went with Braylon Trice, six foot four, two hundred seventy four uh, pound edge rusher from Washington. He was a two time first team All Pac twelve. He was on the slow side this year when it came down to stats, only fourteen tackles, two sacks, but he had a very wonderful touchdown fumble return this year as well with the the Washington Huskies who were inside of that final four of college football teams for the national championship. We got to get to the quarterback. We got to get in the defensive back. We got to get into that backfield. We got to get guys down. I think uh, Braylon Trice would do good at that. Big, tall guy as well, too, six foot four. Um, He can get those hands in the air with those passes. When you got uh, Derek Carr, when you've got Kirk Cousins passing the ball, he can get those hands up there. I love it. I love it. Let's see what you got next. Okay, pick number 101. One thing that Bryce did not have this year was a safety valve. He had Adam Thielen. He had him on the receiving end. But let's just be honest. One of the things that quarterback, one of the things that Carolina has done in their passing offense was have that safety valve tight end. Was have that big target in the red zone. I went with Theo Johnson, the six foot six, two hundred sixty pound tight end from Penn State. Um, he had twenty catches, three hundred twenty eight yards, four touchdowns as the second tight end. He's a big target with four or five speed. Now he may not be the most gifted receiving tight end, but once again, on that run protect, on that pass protect, he's another big body who could spread out on that offensive line. Anytime that um, Bryce needs an extra one or two seconds to throw that ball, but he could also be in a blocking stance and then go into that dig route, go into that dot route, who could easily get maybe four or five yards for that first down. Yeah, I, I love it, man. Yep, it's another solid pick. 
All right. So we that was 101. What's what what's next? 141. Who you got here? 141. So 141, I went ahead to go to that offensive tackle spot. I know that we've gotten some uh very good picks on the offensive line, but I think Javon Foster, the six foot six, three hundred and thirteen pound offensive tackle from Mizzou, would be a good move for Carolina here. First team all SEC, third team all American this year. Mizzou had some very good running offense this year, of course, with their big win this year that Ryan and I covered on tap outs and touchdowns a couple weeks back in the college football season. Mizzou has a very good balanced passing uh, attack as well, too, on that offensive line. And Javon Foster was a big part of that big body, strong guy. I want to see him be able to shuffle his feet a little more on these quicker offenses with him being a big guy, 313. But with him being very, very tall, that's going to help out tremendously on that weak side. I think putting him on that left tackle spot, looking over um, Bryce Young's left shoulder, I think would be very good with him being so tall and also spreading out that pocket a little more. I dig it. Let's keep let's keep this rolling on here. What's what's next? Uh, one forty two. Oh night, yeah, night picks. picks. Yeah, we go back to back on this one. So of course, when it comes down to field position, you need coverage guys on special teams. So I think pick one forty two would be good for Jarvis Brown Lee who was the junior, uh, no, I'm sorry, Jarvis Brownlee Jr., 5'10", 194-pound corner, cornerback from Louisville. He had 30 total tackles, one tackle for a loss, one fumble, re- one fumble recovery, one interception, and six passes defensed. He would be a great special teamer because he's very fiery, very fierce, very scrappy defensive back. He would be great going after the punt returns. He's a little on the smallest side when it comes down to it. Not very gifted athletically in a lockdown corner, but I think covering that kick is very, very important, especially with Carolina not really doing well when it comes down to field position, when it comes down to fielding the punts, when it comes down to getting downfield to stop those kick returners. I think Jarvis Brownlee Jr. would be a very good pick at 142. I'm loving it. All right, we got one more pick left, Shannon. Let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, last but definitely not least, at 240, I go with Josh Proctor, the six foot two, 205 pounds uh, safety from Ohio State. He was a six year guy. Injuries did bother him. That's the reason why he came back to Ohio State, who who had a very good year this year outside of the national championship. He was a third team All Big Ten. 21 total tackles, one and a half tackles for a loss, a sack, and two passes defensed. Once again, when it comes down to fielding those special teams, field position is very important. I think Proctor would be good as a special teamer. May not see a lot of looks on the on the starting defense, but it's a possibility at that safety position, that last line of defense. I think Josh Proctor could be a, a guy who can develop. Yep, and being a six-year guy in college, like he's got that that age of maturity that you look for coming right out of college. Uh, you know, he could add, he could bring some some leadership to this team, despite not being one of those one of those key players on this defense. Uh, I guess I'm the next one that has to do a mock draft. I suppose. Yep, that'll be so, next week. Yeah, I guess we'll we'll do my mock draft next week. Shannon, it's fantastic. And next week on the on the ticker across the Tobacco Road. Sports Radio's YouTube channel will have will have both Michael's and Shannon's mock draft going across the bottom of the screen as I do mine. I cannot guarantee you uh, that I won't take uh, Xavier Leggett if he's available at pick uh, at pick thirty two. Of course, instead of, of, instead of worthy. It. I thought about it, but I'm gonna leave out with you on that one, man. Yeah, yeah, you know, you know, I will. All right, uh, we're we're up against it, everybody. Let's let's remind everybody where you can follow. Uh, all of us here on the show. Michael Davis's Instagram at out of pocket underscore TRSR and at drop the mic wrestling. Make sure you go check out both of those shows. He's going live every weekday for the most part at 12 o'clock with out of pocket. Some really good stuff there. And then drop the mic. We're in WrestleMania season. We are, we are just a mere three or four days away from the two night biggest WrestleMania of all time. WrestleMania 40. So make sure you pay attention and go check out drop the mic. You might see a familiar face. 
this week on the show. You can go find Shannon Smith on X at podcast underscore Smitty. He's doing a bunch of stuff too. He's getting ready. He's getting ready for WrestleMania as are we. And then you can find me on X at tapouts and TDs, facebook.com slash tapouts and touchdowns. You can go, uh, you can also find the YouTube channel searching at tapouts and touchdowns. We have a football show that comes out later tonight. And we also have a WrestleMania preview show that you're, you know, the guy next to me, Michael Davis will be talking about previewing WrestleMania this week. And there's more than likely going to be a PJ Steven return to the show. As far as the cat gate goes, you can find the cat cave at facebook.com slash the cat cave FFSN or on Instagram and X at the cat cave underscore FFSN. Before I finally sign off, I do want to mention uh, and wish a, wish a, I guess, warm uh, thoughts and prayers to the family of Vontae Davis, 34 years old, passed away earlier this week, uh, too young to go. And so a uh, pretty, pretty sad news coming out of, uh, I believe, Southern Florida is where he was residing. Uh, so, so thoughts and prayers go out to the family of one Vontae Davis. Um, as far as the cat cave goes, uh, it's, as far as this week goes, uh, you may now exit the cat cave and make sure you listen to more content on the tobacco road sports radios, YouTube channel, and more Carolina Panthers themed podcasts on the keep pounding podcast network powered by the fans first sports network for Shannon Smith for Michael Davis. I'm Ryan Frick, and we'll see you next week right here inside.